So this year we got a brand new pro staffer. His name's Roger Sapper. He's an Iowa resident. He's got some fantastic ground and he's a stone cold big buck killer. McWhorter Custom Rifles presents This week, folks, we're going to be in Iowa with our new pro staffer, Roger Sapper. Roger's a legendary Midwest big buck slayer, and he's got one of our 45 XMLs. He's got a lot of big bucks on his property, his home turf. He knows it like the back of his hand. With a 45 XML, I'm betting on Roger. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by McWhorter Custom Rifles, McMillan Fiberglass Stocks, Swarovski Optique, and Extreme Wildlife Adventures. So this year we got a brand new pro staffer. His name's Roger Sapper. He's an Iowa resident. He's got some fantastic ground and he's a stone cold big buck killer. And now he is a 45 XML owner, which makes him about three notches even deadlier than he was before. To give you an idea who this guy is, just last year, Roger killed a mega giant, a 212 inch typical deer on his own farm there in Iowa. So Roger and I get to talking and he's got several target bucks this year. He's got one buck in particular that he calls Wheelie Bar. Wheelie Bar is a big typical frame five by five, but he's got a big long sticker that goes back just like a Wheelie Bar, thus the name. Hi, I'm Roger Sapper. I live up here in South Central Iowa. I moved up here in uh, 2006 from Pike County, Illinois, and I love buying farms and fixing them up and managing them. and just to grow them big old Iowa bucks. I started getting pictures of the wheelie bar buck again this year in October. I don't know where he goes for summertime, but he always shows back up here in October. Last year he didn't have that big flyer, but this year he grew that big flyer off his back, and that really got my interest going there for him. So I made up my mind there in October, about the middle of October, when nothing else bigger moved in that I would uh, put full attention on him. I got a couple of buddies that work for Whitetail Properties that use these McWhorter smokeless muzzle loaders. And they've been talking about how they drop them like a sack of taters out three, four, five hundred yards. So I thought I better get one and give her a try. Well, Alan just sent me up this new McWhorter muzzleloader. So we're gonna take it out here on the range here. We're gonna shoot it once and make sure she's dead on. We can't get no better than that. Holy smokes. He set it in for me already, it dialed it in at 200 yards. So he told me to probably hit about an inch and a half high at 100. And so that's what we just shot at here at 100. And boy, that thing's about dead on. At a, it's about an inch and a half, perfect. Let's go kill us a big booner. It's late muzzleloader season up here in Iowa. Hopefully we're gonna intercept them going from the beans back to the bed. So, we'll see how that works.
about nine o'clock in the morning. All of our deer just, the last one just left off the bean field, so we didn't see our target buck though. But we saw lots of deer. And they finally all eventually moved back off to their beds and we had an old bobcat out here this morning. I guess we're gonna slip back out and go back and have some breakfast and try her again this afternoon. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Borden Accuracy, makers of the most accurate custom hunting actions on the market. Manufactured in the USA to true bench rest tolerances. Borden Accuracy equals success. Well, we're gonna switch it up a little bit tonight. This morning we sat down here below the house on a bean field and wasn't very productive. That's where that old bobcat come in there. That was cool. Tonight we're gonna go down here what I call the apple tree. Hopefully we have better luck tonight. So we, we got in the blind about 20 after one and sat there till all oh, around two o'clock. So there were some does coming filtered into the field, about eight to 10 of them. And then they eventually fed on off and went back up there and, and timber and around three o'clock or so, then it was like somebody opened up a floodgate. Well, the does just started pouring in the little bucks and just kept getting bigger bucks and bigger bucks. And I was seeing a lot of uh, big potential for next year. We saw two big five-year-olds for sure. One's a big eight, another one's a big mainframe 10. I call him the G3 buck because his G3 was shorter than the G2 and a G4. It might have got broken off though. And the other one, he's just a straight eight, but they're both five and a half year olds. So I elected to pass them both this year, trying to get to that six and a half year old range. That's usually when they really blow. At one point I counted 88 deer in the field. And when it gets, for me it gets to be hard to tell you know, what, what deer's what, and it's hard to keep track of the new deer that come into the field when I get that high in numbers, and probably 20 to 25 more deer still came into the field, and I was like, just like, you know, going left or right, left or right with my binos, and I looked to the left with my eyes, and I thought, yeah, there's some does there to my left, and I looked back to the right, I'm, so then I picked up my binoculars, and I went back to them does on the left, and I thought, well, I'll just start at the one side. I'll just scan the whole field real slow to see if any new bucks come into the field. And when I done that, there was them three or four does down the fence line there. And as I come around to this old, my scrape tree, they're right behind this scrape tree. I'm like, dude, there's a big old buck right behind that thing. something to the west that scared all the deer and it's like a chain reaction they all just took off running and they all went across the field but the wheelie bar buck and those few does there behind that tree they all just stood there and watched the rest of them run off the field yes.
Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Huff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, Borden Accuracy, Ultimate Antler Deer Feet, Mesquite Creek Taxidermy, and Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. And as I come around to this old, my scrape tree there, right behind this scrape tree, I'm like, dude, there's a big old buck right behind that thing. Welcome back folks. Today we're going to talk about dropping a big game animal in his tracks and where to shoot, what shot place, and what's the best shot place. And this is going to be one of those times that we actually talk about something where people are going to bring up, am I losing too much meat? And I'm going to challenge that by saying, am I actually being ethical to that animal and giving it you know, the quickest possible kill possible. That's exactly right. We all grew up when we first got taught by our daddies deer hunting or our uncles or whoever taught us how, they said shoot them right behind the shoulder, son. And that's not the best place to shoot a big game animal. Will it do the job? Yes, it will. But a couple things, a couple things. Usually that's gonna result in him running off, period, because usually that bullet that's gonna left less uh, resistance there, it's usually gonna exit. You're gonna get to practice your blood trailer, which is all great, but that animal's gonna be running. Adrenaline's gonna be pumping all through that meat, and anybody that's eaten a bunch of deer before knows that a bang flop deer tastes a whole lot better than a deer that ran. Yeah, absolutely, and the other thing is that you're also further back, so you're not gonna get that increased hydrostatic shock that you would get by moving that shot forward and going under the point of the shoulder and increasing that blood, pre blood pressure and actually knocking the animal unconscious and him falling over. So whenever you're that far back, you do the most, most projectiles, unless you're using a really large projectile, which you do see people do, they move up and they'll move up in caliber to try and shoot that point and try and get that bang flop, but it's just not gonna happen as efficiently as if you move forward on that animal. That's exactly right. And the burger bullets, the cup and core bullets that we use, when, a, when an animal's broadside, we wanna go straight up that leg to where it hits the body, and then go halfway up, straight up that leg, and you wanna put that bullet right there. And that's gonna go in there, it's gonna uh, create huge hydrostatic shock, gonna cut off the, the blood flow to that animal's brain, his, usually his back legs are gonna suck up and he's gonna tump over. It's That's just here. like, it's, you know, the burger is giving that UFC knockout. Yeah, exactly right. If an animal's quartering, our general rule of thumb is you're gonna aim for the point of the off shoulder. In other words, if he's quartering away, you don't wanna shoot him on the point of this shoulder because that could be a superficial wound or just go right out the front of the brisket. You wanna find that point of the shoulder on the opposite side and that's where you want to aim. If he's quartering two, same story. And each time you're doing that, you're still looking for that point to where you're going to be crossing where both the lung and the heart, you know, that's where they intercross, that's where the blood is supplying the lungs, you know, like, or correction, the lungs is supplying the, uh, the blood with oxygen at that point and carrying it throughout. And that's also that point to where, like we said earlier, is like when that bullet hits, it's going to spike that pressure of the brain, knocking them out, they're actually going to lose consciousness, lock up, and they're going to bleed out and go through what's called hypoxia, which is where the blood is no longer getting oxygen, and they're actually going to bleed out and die at that point before they ever regain consciousness. So now not only do I not have to track any, but I've also been ethical to that animal with that. That's exactly right. Using these burger bullets and McCorder custom rifles, you will forget how to track a deer fairly quickly. I've already forgotten how to. <laughs> 
That's our downrange segment for the day, brought to you by Allen and Keith and McWhorter Custom Rifles. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Tacticam, Sig Sauer, Trigger Tech, Brooks Barrels, Capstone Precision Group, and Hawkins Precision. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Real Texas Barbecue. Dude, this is cool or what, buddy? It's good. I can't believe we smashed a freaking our tar number one target, Buck. Number the one. first evening in the blind. We just smoked a freaking pig. He probably fell over here about 70 yards, dropped like a sack of potatoes, and big him a quarter. Put the hammer on him, boy. Here's the kind of track job we like. Straight down. Look at this freaking pig, man. Holy crap. Look at that big old freaking kicker, man. It's got, look at the mass on that dude. This here, I, this is the golden ticket right here. This McWhorter muzzle loader. That thing hit him. High shoulder, and even that thing just dropped. I mean, just straight down. Oof. I've had a lot of history with this deer. Last year he was just a, a mainframe 10 and he did not have this on there. The other part looked basically the same. Uh, I let him, I, you know, I passed him last year and this year he grew this on there and I'm like, I went back and looked at my pictures and sure enough it was him. I got him in the same place as I did last year. And uh, so I moved a blind where I'd been getting the pictures during bow season. So then I started really honing in on him very hard and. I saw him two other times there in November in bow season, now that blind uh, shotgun season, it came and went. So I got this uh, this new gun here from, from Allen, this McWhorter uh, muzzle loader. So I wanted all the chips in my favor. Before Darren got here the last few days, I've been seeing this buck, I watched him go to bed. So I went up on the driveway and got that same redneck that I moved up there. I brought it down here by my house and we put it up and we sat in it this morning and we did not see him. Saw a lot of deer though. We elected to come down here to this field here. This is the one where I shot Drifter last year, my 212. The field just started piling up. Two o'clock, we had about 15 does out here and a couple small bucks. A lot of good bucks, a lot of does. This one here, he come in, oh, there about a half hour before dark, but he come from a, from a totally different direction than what I was thinking he'd come from, and I guess the rest is history. Big muzzle loader put the smack down on him, and we got him here in our hands. Well, me and Darren went out there and dug through the shed pile, and I found this shed off uh, the wheelie bar buck. This here would have been his, what I think is a three-year-old shed two years ago, so 
I'm pretty sure that the buck was five and a half years old. So congratulations, Roger, on a fantastic buck. We're proud to have you on the pro staff here at McWhorter Custom Rifles and Precision Hunting TV. Can't wait to see what you're gonna do in the future. <laughs>